Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, this is Katrina and I. I am one of the co-chairs of Talk Story. We're just going to wait a couple more minutes to see if a few more people can log in, and then um, we'll get started. Uh, Ray here is uh, my big help, so if you have any questions in terms of audio or technical questions, you can ask him. Hi everyone, we're just going to do one last sound check, uh, one, two, three. If you can hear us, just type yes for those who haven't responded already. Okay, um, thank you everyone for joining us on this uh, webinar on Talk Story, Sharing Our Story on April 19, 2018. Um, so just as an orientation for this webinar, we encourage you guys to write your comments in the chat box. And also, um, any well, for questions, we ask that you please um, hold on to them until we, the Q&A okay. session session at the very end, okay. and that way we want to make sure we get all the questions that you're asking for. And also, um, I believe that uh, all our microphones should be off when another speaker is on. Okay. So just to introduce the panelists, we have Liana Giuliano. She is an Information Resource Manager at Paul Hastings LLP. She is also the um, chair of, a, of, the, of Talk Story on the American Indian Library Association side. Uh, I am Katrina Nye. I am a librarian in the Bellevue School District in Washington, and I'm also co-chair of Talk Story, and I am on the um, Asian Pacific American Library Association side. And we also have Suvin Zhang, my uh, co-chair, she is the children's librarian on the County of Los Angeles Public Library in California. Okay. So, Liana, it is all yours. Okay, thank you. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Liana Giuliano, and I have been involved with the Talk Story program since its inception in 2009. At that time, I was president of the American Indian Library Association, or AILA, and um, Camilla O'Leary was president of ALA. As one of her presidential initiatives, Camilla tasked the five ethnic affiliates to create a self-sustaining family literacy program. Each affiliate was given $4,000 to create the program, which would be spotlighted at ALA Annual in 2010. Ayla and Apollo decided to pool our resources and work together on the project, and the end result was Talk Story, Sharing Stories, Sharing Culture, which is designed especially for families in our communities, but can also be adapted for any ethnic group. When developing the program, we agreed cultural literacy that addresses 
greater awareness and visibility of Asian Pacific Americans and Asian American Indian Alaska Natives was important for the communities that they serve. That led to a discussion about what we felt the communities needed from libraries. We strongly believed that an authoritative bibliography of recommended books that accurately reflected the cultural experiences of APAs and American Indian Alaska Natives was needed. Also, better outreach to our communities and more multi-generational activities involving parents and elders. Similar to issues Apollo has faced, ILA has struggled for years on how to educate people about quality children's literature and literature written by Native authors. So we felt this project was a perfect opportunity for us to share information with a broader audience on this topic. In the end, we decided to focus on basic literacy and cultural literacy. We wanted to focus on reading through story time and then use that as a jumping off point for informal storytelling. The books selected for story time would preferably be written by an Asian American, Asian Pacific Islander, or American Indian Alaska Native author. For the storytelling piece, we envisioned sharing the, of stories as a way of sharing culture and or family history between elders and children. The children could also interpret the stories or tell their own stories through writing and arts and crafts. It fit our needs to make it multi-generational involving the whole family. It was also inclusive because we saw that all families could benefit from sharing their stories and celebrating their heritage. We called the program Talk Story, Sharing Stories, Sharing Culture for a couple of reasons. In Hawaii, Talk story refers to an informal style of conversation. According to Hawaii educational consultant Sandra Tosaka, in talk story, a person shares a story while others collaborate and add to it as it is being told. Many cultures have this notion of talk story to varying degrees. So the program was piloted at six libraries, three for Apollo and three for Ayla. The three public libraries Apollo partnered with were Carson Library, a branch of the County of Los Angeles Public Library, Queens Library in Flushing, New York, and the Lauren Corrin Isley Branch Library in Lincoln, Nebraska. Because the APA community is very diverse, spanning many languages, countries of origin, and every socioeconomic class, Apollo selected three libraries in distinct regions of the US to allow for multiple perspectives. After the Lincoln Public Libraries event, one participant said, I enjoyed seeing the youth and seniors come together to share the Asian culture. For this particular event, Apollo team member Joy Roberts worked with the Lincoln Public Libraries and the local Asian Center. As a result of that collaboration, 35 Vietnamese elders from the Asian Center attended the program, some of whom hadn't stepped foot in a library in 20 years. The three libraries Ayla partnered with were Laguna Public Library, Hannah's Pueblo Community Library, both of which were in New York, I mean, I'm sorry, in New Mexico, and Tuzi Consortium Library in Barrow, Alaska. The focus was on tribal libraries, and the library had to have a children's program already in place so as not to cause extra burden on the librarian hosting the program, since the librarians were also part of our uh, Ayla Family Literacy Task Force. Laguna librarian Janice Koemi shared with us, in one class, Mr. Luther, our storyteller, was singing them a song and telling a story. He asked if anyone wanted to sing, and a little boy just started singing in our language. He surprised Mr. Luther. In another class, he greeted the class in the beginning in our language, and they responded right back with no hesitation, and he was really impressed. Overall, there were 323 participants at nine ALA and Apollo events. As mentioned previously, the program was created to address the literacy needs of our communities by building self-esteem and cultural identity in our children while sharing knowledge and creating awareness of APA and American Indian Alaska Native communities. Secondarily, it promotes APA and American Indian Alaska Native representation in books and library programs. The final product, after we uh, worked on this for quite many months, was a website, the Talk Story Together website. 
a search which includes a searchable database of family literacy story times, a program manual for librarians, which can be downloaded, a program brochure, and a flyer template for libraries to use to publicize their events. So what can you do in your community? The number one thing is to educate yourself. Read and keep abreast of the issues. Purchase books that are written by APA and Native authors and share those books with your families, with your friends and family. Most importantly, don't be shy about speaking up if you recognize inaccuracies in books at your library. It is important that we all take a stand against books that inaccurately reflect any person or group. Due to the success of the initial project, Ayla and Apala decided to continue our partnership. And in 2012, we were fortunate to receive a grant from Toyota Financial Services to provide additional funding for talk story programs. The partnership has continued. And to date, we have been able to award 70 grants overall, 61 of them coming from Toyota funding. Now we would like to have some of our past uh, grant winners share their stories. First off is Aaron Laframboise, Director of Library Services at Medicine Springs Library in Montana. Aaron's library received an ALA grant in 2017. Aaron? Good morning. As Liana said, I'm Aaron Laframboise, and I'm the Library Director here at um, Blackfeet Community College, Medicine Springs Library. It's both an academic library and a community library, so we serve the entire community, even though we're stationed here at the college. Um, when we got the Talk Story grant, we had wanted to have something in a new initiative we were doing at the annual powwow and have storytelling at the powwow. Once we got there, we realized that that's not the place for storytelling. Um, the kids were just too overexcited. They were running around. So we regrouped and we decided what would be a good place where we would see the most people. And so every year, Blackfeet Community College holds a um, Days of the Beginning. And it's a, a week-long event where we have both academic and community presentations. Um, Oftentimes in our archives here in the library, we'll have presentations for students. And so we asked a group of four elders. You can see three of them in this picture. The other one must just be right around the corner to come in and tell stories. And they were like, OK, we'll think of something. You know, They work with kids, and they were really excited. As they were walking by our kids section, they saw a book we had on display, a new book we had purchased called I Am Not a Number by Jenny K. Dupuy. Um, she's an author out of Canada about boarding school. And um, all four of these ladies had been in boarding school um, when they were younger. And so they went in, and we had, I would say, about 200 to 250 middle school students come through the building that day. And there were four different activities, and the storytelling was one of them. And the kids were really interested. You can see them just sitting there listening to the elders talk about um, connecting what you can read on our shelves and then some of their own experiences. Um, I think that's really important, because I've heard other communities say books like I Am Not a Number is a really hard book to give to kids. You know, it's it's about the more um, brutal aspects of residential school and boarding school. So having elders talk about it, and it wasn't all traumatic um, to talk about you know, some of their memories and um, and just show kids that the books on the shelves aren't just. Um, aren't just things that happened in the past. They're things that their grandmothers or great-grandmothers and grandfathers have um, have participated in that, and that the kids got to ask them questions. It was great. These ladies talked all day long um, you know, to 250 kids. And I'm really proud to have had the ability to have them come in and share their stories with our community. 
Thanks so much, Erin. Next, next up for Ayla, we have Rachel, the first year student success librarian at Fresno State University in California. Ray's library received a grant in 2016. Thank you. I'm just recovering from a cold, so bear with me. I uh, wanted to really thank the uh, Talk Story Committee and Ayla and Apala for allowing us to uh, really showcase what academic libraries can do to promote and foster uh, cross-cultural engagement with our community. So at Fresno State, it's also known as California State University Fresno, one of 23 uh, campuses of the CSU, uh, one of the biggest systems in the country. Uh, we are a public university, and our mission, similar to the other uh, universities in Cal State, is to really empower and educate our students for success. And in some ways, we're also interested in service learning, high-impact practice, and ways to promote uh, dialogue and civic discourse on issues relating to uh, community matters and engagement. And in Fresno, for many of you who may not be familiar, it is located in the Central Valley, the heart of California, uh, right in the center. And we actually have a lot of uh, Native American tribes and groups uh, in this area, uh, such as the Chichancy tribe and the Table Mountain group. And so what we did was uh, we uh, put in an application in under uh, my uh, work as the Library Diversity Committee uh, chair, co-chair at the time. And uh, we put something together where we wanted to engage with the community. So we work and partnered with the Cross-Cultural and Gender Center, which is our um, quote unquote Office of Diversity uh, here at Fresno State to promote a public program. And you can see the flyer here. And we were able to actually purchase, uh, use that fund uh, to purchase uh, resources too. So you see um, children's books. And you're probably wondering, well, what does the children's books have to do with an academic library? Actually, uh, Fresno State, we have the Arnie Nixon Center for Children's Literature, which is actually world-renowned uh, for its um, collection. It's actually one of the biggest research collections, special collections on children's books. So this was a great partnership to purchase the materials on children's literature to, uh, on, on this topic on, uh, written by Native American authors and uh, voices, and to really put uh, that collection into our research. Uh, so that other uh, scholars or uh, students can access them when they're conducting research. And so with the program itself, we were able to showcase what we had uh, purchased and also uh, invite the community members to hear from two oral uh, speakers. Uh, they were uh, really giving uh, storytelling uh, from the Chichancy tribe, and they were reading stories in English and in their uh, uh, native language, and it was really cool to hear it side by side. And uh, we partnered with our Native American Studies program as well as Ethnic Studies program to invite students to come in on a Saturday morning. Uh, it was a great way to just uh, build a community um, relations and also establish that the library is committed to supporting and fostering uh, diversity and uh, community engagement uh, by highlighting uh, this kind of work. Uh, thank you. We are very happy to have Lee Her, advocacy manager for Stone Food, with us today. They were awarded one of our grants in 2017, and it's a nonprofit community organization serving families in Fresno County. Thank you. Um, thanks uh, for joining us today and also for the opportunity to share our work. Um, so Stone Soup is located in Fresno, California. Um, it was originally established to meet the needs of Southeast Asian refugee families in a neighborhood, and services have included programs around after-school tutoring, youth empowerment, civic engagement, and language and cultural classes. Um, it has always been an organization that provides direct services as well as um, it advocates for the community. So um, we currently serve close to 150 uh, children ages 0 to 5 on a weekly basis through both our preschool program and our playgroup program. And um, we also have a parent engagement program where we provide resources and support to parents through workshops, um, trainings, referrals um, that are relevant to their needs. Um, on the advocacy side, we collaborate closely with our local and state and national partners around issues that really impact our community, um, including you know issues around English learners or data disaggregation or early learning. Um, and so um, with the Talk Story grant, 
um, last year, we were able to provide programming for our families that promotes early literacy, um, supports local authors, and provides opportunities for um, students to expand their learning experience through a diverse collection of ethnically appropriate children's books. Um, as you can see in the picture there, we have um, one of our um, local authors, uh, Darina Lazo Gilmore Young. She's a local Filipino American author, and she came out to our Family Day, and um, it's a Family Day Literacy Day event um, that we had last year. And she was able to read one, uh, a couple of her books. One of them was A Stone in the Soup: A Mongrel's Journey to the United States, um, and it was a really uh, fun event too, in that children got to meet the author. You know, a lot of times. You know, they say they see okay author, and then they never get to meet who you know um, some of these authors. So it's, it was great to have a local author at the event and have them actually meet the author. Um, as you can also see there, there's um, uh, another organization that came out. It's called Reading Heart in Fresno, and they were also joined us. Um, it was a nonprofit organization that was actually created by a nine-year-old um, uh, child who, um, and her name uh, was. Danae Ferguson, and she was able to come out there with their family, and this nonprofit was there to provide free books to our families that um, participated in the event. So um, these are just uh, examples of, of some of the things that we were able to do with the fund. Um, again, thank you for the opportunity to be a part of Talk Story and also to share um, a little bit about Stone Soup Fresno. Thank you. Uh, so next, um, we are very happy to have um, Shyla Moore. She is part of the North. Um, I'm sorry, if my computer just uh, went out. Uh, the the North Branch of Long Beach Public Library in California. They got one of our grants in 2016. So Shyla Moore is a general librarian and in adult services. Hello, good morning. Um, we have recently moved to our new location, the brand new Michelle Obama Library in North Long Beach. Um, I was doing a cultural conversations program at my previous branch. And basically what the program was, bringing in local people who lived in the neighborhood to share the stories of immigration, dance, food, folklore. I ran the program for six months. It was very well attended. So when we finally moved to our brand new library, I applied for the grant so that we could have a relaunch of cultural conversations. And what we used the grant money for was a Polynesian cultural celebration that actually lasted the entire day. So here's a few of the pictures to give you an idea. What at the event consisted of is I partnered with the Pacific Island Ethnic Art Museum here in Long Beach, California. They did a wonderful display of artifacts of a journey through Micronesia. They had um, a tour of the islands, bowls, basket weavings and such in a locked display case in our front entry. We also partnered with our local Parks and Rec. They have a Polynesian dance group that consists of three age groups, the, the young girls, teenagers, and adults. That group came for free, and for one whole hour, they did a tour of the islands. So they had dances from all of the different islands, Hawaiian dance, Tongan, from New Zealand, and several costume ch changes. So that, that was quite a performance. Prior to the performance, we hired a ukulele man to come in who is a friend of one of my coworkers who performs at Disneyland. And during the time he performed, we um, used money um, that was a gift in kind through my library system, and we had shaved ice. So the first 100 people who attended as they entered were given a lay, and then that guaranteed them a shaved ice. So during 
The first hour was artifact displays from our guest speaker who was there to speak about wayfinding and Tongan culture. She brought baskets and beads, clothing, tarps. Um, so we watched a documentary on um, wayfinding uh, while he sang ukulele and had people come up and do um, dancing. Um, after that, we had a local family volunteer to come in to do lay making demonstrations. They originally were only coming for the first hour and they ended up staying the entire um, four hours. They got all of their neighbors involved. They picked plumerias from all the trees here in North Long Beach, it seems, and everyone was able, a hundred people were able to leave um, with a beautiful handmade lay that, that they were taught how to do. We also had a photo booth that was fun with a kind of a Hawaiian background and we had hula skirts and lays and ukuleles and everyone was able to go in, um, take some pictures in the photo booth. We had hibiscus tattoos that people could put on and a huge bowl of almond joy. Um, at the very end was the dance performance that was just, just beautiful. Um, the presentation um, by one of our council members, Ants, who ran the Pol Polynesian celebration in Carson every year, um, sang songs in her native language, um, dressed very nicely, um, did a whole thing on wayfinding before Moana came out and talked about the, the story. It was just a beautiful day. Um, I wish I could do this every weekend. It, it was a lot of work, but without the help of all the different community members, it wouldn't have been possible to have such a grand celebration. And also we added um, over $1,200 worth of books focusing on the Polynesian culture, language, and music. Thank you very much. Thank you, um, Sheila. So one of, besides the awarding grants, Talk Story also has other resources that we encourage everyone to take advantage of. We have actually book lists, and the um, Apala book list are actually done in collaboration with uh, Professor Sarah Park Dolan. She is an associate professor of the MLIS program at St. Catherine University, and she's also well known for being a huge advocate for um, diversity in children's literature. So these lists were created in order um, to have, to feature books about Asians in Asia, um, Asian diaspora and Asian Americans. And a lot of the books, they try to highlight books that are written in their own voice, although there are some that are not. Her grad students, in collaboration with our committee members, have taken a lot of work to carefully vet and find these books, because we're trying to record basically almost every Asian American um, book that was written. Um, she herself uses these book lists as references and also um, in her publications as well as anthologies that she has published. So um, just in further detail of the book list that you can find on the Talk Story website, uh, the Apollo Talk Story book list is a comprehensive list of recommended Asian Pacific American children's and young adult books. So again, quoting from Dr. Sarah Park Dolan, Authors such as Anna and Lawrence Yap make critical contributions to telling the stories of America's children, telling them beautifully, accurately, and skillfully. These book lists are continuous work, constantly edited, so that individuals, families, educators, teachers, libraries, and organizations can utilize them as an added resource in their homes, schools, libraries, and more. And I know, certainly in my own um, elementary library, Diversity is such a big topic right now. So to, if you are looking for lists that are vetted by people um, that share the ethnic identity of the books that are be being reviewed, that would be a great resource. And Liana? Yes, 
So the ALA book list was created by the uh, Family Literacy Task Force Committee members, and it only includes Native authors. So key criteria for the books are um, books that exhibit values inherent in many American Indian Alaska Native cultures, um, depict our cultures as they are today in a variety of settings and with a variety of themes, allow for children to consider multiple perspectives and values, and do not demean or embarrass a child's heritage. So that was how we um, determined how to pick the books that we have on there. And actually, we'll be going through in the next year um, and doing a, an upgrade and an overhaul of our book list. Back to you, Katrina. Another resource that Talk Story has on our website that not that many people know about is we actually have story time ideas. So I know a lot of people want to include more diversity within their programming but don't know how. This would be a great um, kind of platform to spring off of. So there are three main categories that are available. There is cross-cultural, there is Asian American, and also Native American ideas. So all of these, if you click on one of the links, it is basically an entire story time program written out for you. They include um, finger plays, uh, songs, and crafts, as well as suggested books and programs to carry out. These were also created by um, the Toxray um, committee members on both the Apala and the Ayala side. So we also have a presence in social media. So we do have a Pinterest account, it's Talk Story. And actually we use this to advocate the book list, both the um, Asian Pacific American and American Indian book list. So if you're looking for a more visual guide to find books um, from level preschool up to YA, this would be a good source for you. Not all of the books on the book list are on Pinterest, but we are constantly updating Pinterest, um, to, and it will get, bring you a direct link to Goodreads as well. What's nice about it is that um, the books are already organized by ethnic identities, so if you're looking for a specific kind of subject or group, that would be a great um, thing to look forward to. We are also present on Facebook, so if you were to follow us there, uh, that is where you will find out all our news updates, such as another webinar, or just recently we posted the list of the grant winners for this year. Another thing that we like to do is also post articles and resources that we find as committee members that have to do with Asian American or Native American um, issues in education and literacy, and also just storytelling in general. So if you're looking for a way of finding a resource where you can learn more about the issues surrounding diversity, um, and you, but you don't know where to begin, that would be a great start. Okay, so um, as for our background in funding, with the support of American Library Association, American Indian Library Association, Asian Pacific American Librarians Association, and especially with the Toyota Financial Services for support, Talk Story for the past nine years was able to award um, 70 grants um, within that time period. So we are very thankful for their continuous support and funding. However, due to several major changes with Toyota, we are currently looking for more funding opportunities for the 2019 and onward. So that is a work in process that we are asking people to please stay tuned and seeing what changes will come. So right now is the Q&A session. So um, I highly recommend, since we have a these wonderful presenters and all panelists here who have experience in making collaborations and doing programming to go ahead and um, ask any questions that you may have.
Um, hi, Lizette. Uh, we do plan to share our slides and the recordings with the email. So that will be, and we'll probably add some additional resources as well. So yes, those will be available. And uh, fellow presenters, go ahead and uh, just jump in when you feel uh, when you see a question that goes with your program. Katrina, it might be easier if you actually read the questions to us because it's a little bit hard to see them. Okay. So what I have is. For, part, for the participants, has your talk story grant served as a catalyst for other programming at your institution? This is um, Shiloh Moore. By having um, the Polynesian Cultural Celebration, it really helped launch the cultural conversations, which is every first Saturday of the month, I've been able to work with our local public access television station. They came and recorded several of the sessions and put together, let's say, a little ad that goes on public television to promote it. I've also um, now had different city officials um, come and ask to participate. So it, it's really helped a lot with the newspaper coverage, being on local public access TV. It's really turned into um, quite a popular event, um, not only here at my library, but also um, the city of Long Beach. Hi. Oh, hi, this is Erin from Place. Um, I just wanted to say that um, what it provided for us was a connection to this group of elder women who we didn't necessarily have before we did the talk story. And now it's really great because um, if we have questions, um, I've had other things, especially in the archives where I've needed help. Um, they're just a phone call away, and without Talk Story, I don't think I would have necessarily cultivated that relationship with them. Hello, this is Lee with Stone Soup, and um, the uh, support from Talk Story was just, um, I, I think that it's been so helpful in a lot of ways. Um, and one of them is that any additional funds um, from from then, we were able to use to contribute to our library. Um, earlier, there was a picture of our library, like a section of it, and um, and that has really helped us to get additional clicks for that, and that has um, been great. Um, and again, as far as just allowing our families and the children to meet local authors and actually talk to them, that was just amazing. As well. So um, the grant has been very helpful in a lot of ways. Thank you. Hi, this is Ray. So for us, we actually also had an exhibit called Native Voices, which was sponsored by ALA and the National uh, Library of Medicine, uh, NLM. And this was in 2016, which I uh, neglected to mention uh, in the presentation. And so um, the public program connected to the exhibit, which encouraged folks to look at the exhibit and also um, check out our resources. But in terms of further programming, um, we were able to do more as a library diversity committee, um, being part of the library and working with different partners um, to indicate um, uh, and show and demonstrate that we could you know, do these kinds of activities, get grants, and be a really strong uh, collaborator and catalyst for this kind of work.
there any other questions or maybe comments? Thank you, Michael. Oh, thank you, Michael. Um, Ray, do you happen to know if it um, is possible to add resources um, when we want to distribute this webinar? Uh, sorry, Katrina. Can you uh, elaborate? Um, there is a way for us to share this webinar with participants later, correct? Uh, that's right, but I don't know how Brian set it up, if he did an RSVP or not. And so um, the, the one thing you could do is you could put it in the, we can put it in the Apollo website. So we have done this kind of webinar on Talk Story, so people can access it since it's being recorded. And then, you know, just check the Apollo website, which I'm going to put on right now. And um, it should be up within like a day or so. Does that help? Yes. That helps. Okay. So I see a question, will you be at ALA? Um, so individual members of Talk Story will be at um, ALA, but um, as of right now, we don't have any plans of any poster sessions or a booth. Um, what you can do is on the Talk Story website, the contact information for Lila um, Schumann and myself is there. So if you have any questions or would like to um, need any help on any program that programming that you wish to um, do, you can contact us there. Yeah, I know for sure that I will be at ALA this year. So Katrina, if there's no other questions, should we go ahead and uh, wrap it up? Um, anybody else would like to say any party thoughts? But otherwise, thank you all for participating. I hope this was informative. Thank you to all our guest speakers for their great work and collaboration. So thank you all for attending.